Wait, wait, wait. So you are releasing Lake Michigan into Lake Michigan, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> Got that? One with the lake. My name is Derek Salmon, and I love fish, all different kinds, big and small. I'm on a quest to learn about every species of fish that lives in the state of Wisconsin. So come join me on Badgerland Fishes. Hey everyone, Derek here, and I'm here with my brother Ryan, and we're going to be helping out and observing a sturgeon tagging, where the DNR will be tagging a bunch of baby lake sturgeon to be released in Lake Michigan. Lake sturgeon are thought to be around 200 million years old. They do not possess a backbone and their body is scaleless, with five rows of bone-like plates instead. Lake sturgeon are also known for their triangular shaped head, shark-like tail, and four barbels on the underside of their snout. They are threatened in 19 of the 20 states and provinces in which they're found and are listed as a species of special concern in Wisconsin. Later on, they became prized for their eggs, which are used to make caviar. As a result of overfishing, the addition of dams, loss of habitat, pollution, and their slow maturity rate, lake sturgeon populations began a steep decline. In the early 1800s, it was possible that thousands or even millions of sturgeon lived in Lake Michigan. It is now estimated that only 2,000 to 5,000 adult lake sturgeon are left in the lake. There have also been no records of lake sturgeon in the Milwaukee River since the 1890s. Since lake sturgeon used to play such an important role in Lake Michigan, the Wisconsin DNR began stocking hatchery-raised sturgeon in 2003. In order to give the best chance for the hatchery-raised sturgeon to return to the Milwaukee River to spawn, the streamside rearing facility was created. Today, we're near River Edge Nature Center with Brad Eggold from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources to tell us a little bit more about the streamside rearing facility. Hi, I'm Brad Eggold, the Great Lakes District Fishery Supervisor here at River Edge Nature Center and just north of Milwaukee. Behind me is our Milwaukee River Sturgeon Rearing Facility where we've been raising lake sturgeon using Milwaukee River water since 2006. And we're able to raise about a thousand lake sturgeon annually for stocking back into the lake. We know that if we start these fish on Milwaukee River water, uh, they're able to home back to the Milwaukee River when they're of spawning age. Hopefully in uh, 15 to 20 years we'll see mature fish coming back to the Milwaukee. Probably for the last 10 or 11 we've been stocking in excess of over a thousand fish per year. Um, the fish come to us from our Wolf River stock of lake sturgeon. That's the, the big river system middle part of the state. And we get eggs there in middle to late April. Put them in the facility, hatch them right from egg, and we get them to about 200 millimeters or seven inches by the end of September where we release them down in downtown Milwaukee. After learning about the facility, I can't wait to check out one of the baby sturgeon for myself. Ryan and I scoop one up and put it in a small holding tank for better views. I love this thing. Look at it. It's adorable. So I'm holding in this tank a little baby lake sturgeon. And these guys are super adorable. And um, they're a very prehistoric fish. And scientists believe they've been around for a really long time. And so to be able to see a baby one that could grow up and uh, live almost as long, if probably if not longer than some humans, is pretty amazing. What do you think? It's awesome. So what's the biggest threat to these guys? Um, you mean predator-wise? Or? Predator or, you know, or, I mean urbanization I mean, of course has played some role. In... Yeah, absolutely. The, the, one of the biggest issues that they have is, is um, being able to have that right spawning habitat. Um, as well as in the past it was overfishing and over harvesting but now with the, the increased regulations out there on them and a lot more um, uh, protection from uh, just the general sense of protection in the community out at large um, helps uh, definitely helps out. After observing the sturgeon the tagging crew started their process for pit tagging the baby sturgeon. The tag is implanted so that if the sturgeon returns to the Milwaukee River to spawn, they can be identified as one of the sturgeon from the rearing facility. Well, the, the pit tags we're using, and, and we have used in, in, in the fisheries world, is a passive integrated transponder. It's the same kind of technology used in pets. So if you want to ID your cat or dog, if it gets lost, they'll have these uh, readers that 
animal places and they'll read a lost dog and go back to the database and find out who owns it where the person is so we're using the same technology here so these are kind of like all your pet sturgeon then yes exactly so if you lose your sturgeon <laughs> then we can find it so what we have here is basically a sturgeon assembly line and so the sturgeon are taken from the trailers and they're put into a knockout tank and they're kind of using a um, clove solution which is kind of more of a natural way to knock the fish out and so the fish are knocked out then they're doing a fin clip so that they can identify um, the sturgeon if they're caught in the field again then after the fin clips they put the tag in then they are measured and weighed and then the chip is scanned so that they have the number and then the sturgeon recover and they're put back in the trailer and so then in a couple days all the sturgeon are going to get released into Lake Michigan and they will be able to grow and uh, hopefully thrive for a really long time. After learning about the tagging procedure, Brad and I took the short walk down to the Milwaukee River to see where the water is pumped up to the trailer. That's, that's the intake. Uh, it's, a, it's like a 55 gallon drum. We have a two horsepower pump in there and it pumps has to pump the water about 400 feet back to the trailer and about 22 feet from the bottom of the river has to go all the way up in the top tank. From the river, the water goes through a series of filtration systems before reaching the baby lake sturgeon. If you follow it here, it goes into these two black filters. They're essentially very large pool filters packed with 300 pounds of sand in each one. Filter the water, there's quite a bit of fines and particulates in Milwaukee River, so it filters that out a little bit and it sends it up back up through here. And we're going through a, a UV filter, which helps sterilize any bacteria or fungus that's in the water. And from there, it goes up into this tank, which we call a distribution tank. And it stays at a certain level in there. And essentially, we then gravity feed the tanks that are inside the trailer from this, from this distribution tank. In addition to the filtration setups, the rearing facility is also equipped with multiple safety systems to ensure the conditions remain ideal for the sturgeon. Essentially what we have is a, just like a home security system. So right now, this security system is monitoring the level of water in the tank outside. It's also monitoring is there actually power going on. So if we lose power or the water level drops in that tank, it sends out a call through the cell phone and then it, it has a capability of ringing four different people's phone numbers to say that there's a problem. So this will actually call somebody. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. After the tagging event, I headed home and went to riveredgenaturecenter.org to sponsor one of the sturgeon we tagged earlier in the day. Alright, I'm on the River Edge Nature Center website right now, and I am signing up to sponsor our sturgeon. A few days later, I arrived in Milwaukee to enjoy the festivities. Well, we made it to Sturgeon Fest, and I'm here at Lakeshore State Park, and there's a bunch of people gathered around, a lot of activities going on. And this is where the baby sturgeon are going to be released into Lake Michigan. I obtained my wristband and passed a variety of sturgeon themed apparel including t-shirts, stuffed animal sturgeon, books, and more. There was even an underwater camera where you could see some of the baby sturgeon that were just released. I got in line and waited to pick up the sturgeon I sponsored earlier in the week. I headed down to the dock and readied for the release. Well, this is the moment. The moment that all of the volunteer hours, these uh, previous years of research, and uh, all the help by everyone in the community to get these baby sturgeon to this moment of release. So Ryan and I talked about it, and uh, we're naming our little guy Brutus. And uh, he is tagged at the, um, he was tagged at the facility. And so now he's going to be released into Lake Michigan, and hopefully he will help uh, revitalize the sturgeon population. And just like that, we have one more sturgeon here in Lake Michigan. After releasing Brutus and returning my bucket, I went to the table to get a sponsorship certificate, which includes a number you can register online. That way, if your sturgeon is ever captured again, you can be notified. 
I decided to stick around and see what other festival goers were naming their sturgeon. And now peanut. <laughs> it's Ready a good release? name. It says riverbed. <laughs> oh, riverbed, okay. Oh, he's got to jump for it. Whoa. There he goes. Bye, Tiny. Bye, Tiny. Have a good life. Have a good life, Tiny. Ready? Bye, Tiny. Those are ready. Give him one, one more pack of bye. Wait, wait, wait. So you are releasing Lake Michigan into Lake Michigan, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> Got that? One with the lake. It was amazing to see young kids not only learning about sturgeon, but being able to touch, name, and release them. It will definitely be an experience they won't soon forget. While walking around, I also had the chance to interview other community members about their thoughts on Sturgeon Fest. Does it rival Summerfest? Uh, oh yeah. It, it definitely uh, is good for public awareness. I mean, we need conservation, citizen science type projects. And there were a lot of kids here, young kids, which is really great that parents do that for kids because they'll remember that and uh, grow up hopefully to be, you know, an important uh, part of saving our uh, environment. We've been out here all day. We got the, the fish here about 11 o'clock. This is our 13th annual release. You know, we've been down here at Summerfest or State, Lakeshore State Park since 2013. Uh, we're wrapping up the day. We, it looks like we've been sponsoring probably excess of 700 fish. We have about 100 left in the tank, but it's been a great day. A lot of families coming out and enjoying the time, and I think we've we made a, a lot of new friends with sturgeon today because I, I took a poll at the start of the event and there were probably 50 to 100 people that was their first time here. So hopefully we've, we've captured their fascination with sturgeon and they'll come back for another sturgeon fest next year and years beyond. So it's been very successful and a lot of happy people. The lake sturgeon is a majestic fish from the dinosaur age and the largest and oldest species of fish in the Great Lakes. Due to efforts by the Wisconsin community, including the Wisconsin DNR, River Edge Nature Center, and many sponsors and volunteers, the Lake Sturgeon may just make a comeback in Lake Michigan and the Milwaukee River. If you would like to learn more or sponsor a sturgeon of your very own, head on over to sturgeonfest.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Fishes. Yeah.